Every day, on average, the United States loses four to seven children to child abuse and neglect. Every year, around 700,000 children in the United States experience abuse. Only 12% of child abuse cases are reported. And as adults, those who have experienced child abuse are two and a half times more likely to develop major depression and six times more likely to experience post-traumatic stress disorder. Child abuse is a serious issue that receives inadequate attention, but it needs to be discussed. Child abuse survivors are often wary of sharing their story due to judgments and labeling in the society. But in this podcast, we have the opportunity to listen to survivors' stories. They will talk about the abuse they went through as a child, the impact this abuse has had on different aspects of their life, in their childhood, in their adulthood. They will be talking about their journey of healing, and they will give personalized advice to survivors and victims out there. Of course, the way each survivor tells their story and how much detail they will provide is different. The goal of this podcast is to empower survivors who have gathered the courage to share their stories. It is to help survivors and victims out there to realize that they're not alone and to encourage them to speak up, to seek help, and step into the journey of healing. For those of us who have not experienced child abuse, it is to have an idea of how it is like to survive child abuse through uh, the survivor's words. It is for us to think about how we can better support those who choose to share their experience with us and how it looks like on the outside. The goal of this podcast is not to make generalizations about child abuse and surviving it just through listening to survivor's story. The way one has dealt with an experience of, say, physical abuse might be different from another survivor, the extent of abuse could have been different. There are many, many criteria involved on how uh, each experience shapes one's character traits or impacts one's decisions. We will be having questions and answer sessions with professionals who will be giving us more objective and scientific information about how child abuse impacts various aspects of one's life. And we can make the, our generalizations there. And we're not here to make any judgment about how one chooses to tell their story and what their take has been on the experience of abuse. These podcasts contain sensitive content that may be triggering and upsetting for some. So I have clarified the trigger warnings before we dive into each story. And resources for further information are included in the description of each episode. My name is Helia. And you're listening to my podcast, The Blue Radio. Let's dive in. Approximately one in four girls and one in 13 boys experienced child sexual abuse at some point in their childhood. Kane was one of these children. His story contains descriptive information about child sexual abuse. So if this topic is triggering or sensitive for you, please listen with a professional or a trusted friend. Kane was abused by his stepfather for nine years and shared his journey and his unique perspective of the impact it had had on him with me. Let's hear it from him. Well, I was six years old when it started. It was my mother's second husband. Um, I remember it very clearly how it started. I was giving my new stepfather a cuddle. He'd been part of our family for about six months. Um, And it was just, he was a nice guy, well, it seemed. And I liked him and I was giving giving him a cuddle. The next thing, his hands were down my trousers and he was kissing my neck in a way that he shouldn't have been. And it progressed from there. Within six months, he was raping me four times a day, every day. And that went on for nine and a half years. And his abuse got progressively sicker through the years. Um, It started with just his hands and fingers, then to all the parts of his body. And 
then there was hairbrushes, um, garden rakes. Well, you name it, whatever he, his sick mind fantasised about using on that particular day. That's what he wanted to do. Um, I don't really think there's much more I can say about the abuse, but it went on for nine years, and so I was 15 when it stopped. Once the abuse was over, Kane grew increasingly distant from his mother. Once I turned 15 and it was all over... I remember the day it ended. Um, I was travelling back in the car from the police station with my mum. I remember my mum sitting on one side of the car. I was sat on the other side of the car. It was dark. Um, it was about half past eleven at night. And I remember it was raining. I remember watching the um, raindrops falling down the window screen the window screen next to me glistening in the lights from the street lights I, rem I remember the silence between us I mean never in all my life and never again did I ever feel so far away from my mum even though she was sat less than a foot away from me I never felt so far and so distant from her her world had just crumbled around her ears. She just found out the man she married had been sexually abusing three of her four children for up to nine years. Her world was crumbling apart and there I was, almost as giddy as a schoolgirl. You know, my world suddenly, I was free, I could sleep tonight, I didn't have to worry about him creeping into my bedroom in the middle of the night to fondle me and do disgusting things or to lead me downstairs to the kitchen so he could rape me over the kitchen table. I knew I never had to go through that again and I was so elated. Yeah, I couldn't say, I couldn't speak, I couldn't say anything because there was my mum on the other side of the car, heartbroken. Oh, well, we were so far apart. Having grown distant from his mother, as a young adult, Cain made some decisions that he connects to his childhood abuse. That distance between us lasted for so many years. So many years, you know, as the reality of what had happened to me hit me. And I went off the rails and I went into drugs and drink and had sex with any man that moved. Um, which is a symptom of sexual child abuse. Mo some sexual child abuse victims become very promiscuous because it's the only thing we know. It's the only thing we trust is the way our body feels. While, you, you know, at that point, you know, it's the only it's the only thing that feels normal to you and it becomes like a drug you need it you need to have sex to feel normal because having sex makes you feel dirty and when you feel dirty you feel normal you know and you can't let it and it's so twisted the whole process is twisted of what it does to you as an as a young adult and I remained like that till I was in my 20s I went on and I had a daughter called Kirsty, got myself clean, became a good parent, raised a beautiful daughter, but I was, even as an adult, I, I don't cuddle people, I can't stand being touched by other people, um, I can't hold relationships, I have real difficulty forming friendships, because I just don't trust anyone, and that's just the tip of the iceberg of, the, uh, of what it does to you as an adult. As an adult, Kane has acknowledged his abuse and learned how to deal with his past trauma. I mean, where am I now? I'm in a good place now. I mean, I'm in a very good place now. Um, I'm 43 years old. I have a good job, a nice home. I have friends. I don't have a relationship because I know and I understand that one of those would be almost impossible for me to have. Um, that's something that he took away from me. And I will never be able to get that back. 
But I live for the future and I can actually say the words now. I was sexually abused by my stepfather for nine years and I can say it without crumbling into a heap on the floor and crying my eyes out. I can actually do that now, which is something I never, ever thought I would be, ever be able to do ever in my life. I asked Kane for his advice to survivors and victims out there. There is no advice I can give them. Each journey to where I am now is your own. Take your time. There's no time limit. If you're angry, be angry. If you're sad, be sad. But remember, you did, you did nothing wrong. Anything that happened during that abuse, you were the child. You weren't in control of it. They were. They're the ones that need to be, that, that need to pay. Your biggest revenge on them is by living your life and living it the best you can. And having the most amount of fun. Because as my old gran used to say, you only pass this way once and this is not a rehearsal. Yes, a bad thing happened. Yes, a terrible thing happened to you. But there's nothing you can do about it. You can't change it. And you're never going to get the answers to why it happened. You're never going to get those answers because those answers don't exist. You need to face it, live it. And have the nightmares, go through the nightmares, go through the night sweats and the night terrors and the and all the other problems that it comes with. But you can have a good life. You may not be like me. You may find it easy to have a relationship. My sister, my two sisters, both of them have gone on to have meaningful relationships with lots of children. And, you know, one of them has been happily married for years you know, so, but the journey is yours. It is nobody else's. And nobody can tell you how to go through that journey but you. Nobody knows more about that journey than you do. But remember, you are not alone. You are never alone. There are hundreds of us out there that survived. And we bear the scars internally out not not a lot of the time externally, but we bear the scars. And we will bear those scars till the day we die. They're our battle cry. Our battle cry is that I was sexually abused and I survived. And that's what you need to remember. You survived. You're here. You're alive. You're in the world. Don't be a spectator. Be part of it. Just like in the motto to my channel, don't dream your life, be your life. And good luck. And remember, if you're out there and you need to talk to somebody that understands how you feel, reach out to me. I'm only a voice away. God bless to you all. really admire Kane's courage for sharing his story. Abuse, even if done by a single perpetrator, in a single family can have a very different impact on each of its victims. But anyhow, as Kane said, an important part of the healing journey is acknowledging the abuse. That as we understand from his words, he has been very serious about doing so. If you would like to share your story, please email me at the address in the description. I have also included some useful resources on child sexual abuse there. With that, I will end this episode. Thank you for listening.